Hello students, I am Professor Ashish T. Patil from Department of Mechanical Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering, Autonomous, Kolhapur. We are in the subject of Total Quality Management, in that we are discussing the second unit that is Planning for Quality. Last time we have seen the concept of Juran Triology. Today we will discuss the concept of Strategic Quality Planning. Now let us see what do you mean by Strategic Quality Planning. So what is exactly the Strategic Planning? Strategic Planning sets the long term direction of the organization in which it wants to proceed in future. Every organization has its own objectives. Those objectives might be short term objectives or long term objectives. So, when you are discussing about the strategic planning, the organization sets long term direction and based on those directions, organization will proceed. For example, if we want to develop a new product over say next 3 to 5 years, if we want to have any merger with some specific company where we jointly develop the product, if we want to diversify into some other areas. So, under such circumstances, these things cannot be done within say a short time or within one year. For this, you need certain duration and in that duration, you will take such important decisions. So, strategic planning helps the organization to set these long term directions. Strategic planning is the process of envisioning the organization's future and developing the necessary goals, necessary objectives and the required action plans to achieve these goals and objectives. Now, who will take the responsibility for such strategic quality planning? Now, obviously, last time we have seen the leadership concepts. So, leaders are the key people who will mold an organization's future and they will try to manage the entire change under strategic planning. Strategic planning also helps out to find out what organization should and could do in next 3 years or say 5 years or in more years of your future, that is organization's future. So, the basic objective is to achieve the organizational goals despite any of the unforeseeable external forces. So, what exactly the definition of strategic planning is? So, by definition, it is the process of deciding on objectives of the organization, then deciding on changes on these objectives, if we are going to change the objectives. For example, we have seen the example, uh, we want to develop uh, new products or we want to have new diversification. So, this is the objective. Now, strategic planning will help out to have the changes of such ob objectives, which we have decided. Then, strategic planning is also the process of deciding on the resources used to attain these objectives. Now, various resources will be required like man, machine, material, method, money. So, these are the five M's, important M's and these are the actual resources uh, by using which the organization will achieve these decided objectives. Also, strategic planning is the process of deciding on the policies that govern the acquisition, use and disposition of these various resources. For example, you need new technologies for which you need to acquire the new machines, you need expert people, then you need the helpers, operators, skilled operators, unskilled operators, all these are human resources which you need to achieve these objectives. So, strategic planning in that way is the process of deciding on the policies that govern which will acquire these resources or use these resources and dispose these various resources. Now, various examples of strategic planning are the first one is planned growth rate in sales, 
how you are going to uh, increase the sales of your product or services. Then next example is diversification of business into new lines. For example, you are into say uh, automobile line and now you want to go into say retail businesses. So that is another diversification. So this diversification can be the example of having strategic planning for your organization. Then the types of products to be offered, you are now presently offering the vehicles which are based on petrol and diesels and now you want to develop the vehicles uh, which will go into electric field that is electric vehicle you are going to develop. So for such kind of objectives you always need the strategic planning. Now what are the various steps which are involved in strategic quality planning? Now the first step is identification of customer needs. Now this is a basic step to identify the customers first and then to identify their wants and needs. Now what is the meaning of want and need? Now let us take example that if I am thirsty, I will demand a glass of water. Now this is the basic need. Now if I ask for mineral water bottle, then it will become a want. So that is the difference between a need and want. So you have to first identify who all are your customers and then you want to identify their wants as well as needs. Here organizations must seek its customer requirements, then what customers are expecting about your products and services and they should assess the future trends, how the customer will behave with the future trends before developing the strategic plan for your further actions. Next step is determining the customer positioning. So here you have to determine the company's position with regards to customers, where our customer will find us in the actual market when compared to the actual competitors. Then you have to decide on alternatives like whether the organization should give up, maintain or expand market position and that should be considered under this customer positioning. That means whether you are going to wind up with the present product and you will develop a new product or whether you are going to maintain the same product in the market or whether you are going to expand uh, and you will have some different variants of the same product in the market. Such kind of things are there and in that way you have to position yourself in the actual market. Then organization should concentrate and consolidate their position in the areas where the organizations excel. So the areas where you have your excellence, such areas should be found out and you have to position yourself in that market. Now the third step is predicting the future. If you want to survive in the fierce competition, you always have to predict the future. So predicting the future conditions which will affect your product and service should be the prime responsibility. And for that you have to help predicting the future the tools you can use like demographics. Now demographic means the age, what age the society is having. For example, how many uh, old people are there, how many young people are there. That is one of the demographic uh, attribute you can say. Then the sex that means how many male uh, candidates are there in that specific area, how many female uh, contribution is there. So that is another demographic attribute. Then the language aspects, how many languages are spoken. So you can take the help of such tools also that is finding out the demography of the society. Then the economic forecasts are always important which will help you out to find out what kind of business we will be having in uh, coming future. Then technical assessments regarding the upcoming technologies or you can have the projections also of your organizations in the existing market. So by using such tools, you can predict the future. So the, the, the third step, then next step is 
gap analysis. Now you have to identify the gaps between your current state, current state of your organization and the future state of your organization. For example, lack of technology that may be one of the gap, lack of the proper resources. For example, if you are into some specific niche segment, niche segment product you are developing and for that some very skilled labor is required and you are losing or you are having very less resources of uh, these skilled workers or skilled operators, then that may be considered as the gap. So, this step is nothing but identifying such various gap. So, this is called as gap analysis. Now, next step is obviously, you have to close these gaps, you have to acquire the newer technologies, you have to fill the requirements of such skilled resources. So, for that reason, you have to develop a specific plan for closing such gaps and this is also termed as process improvement. Next step is aligning the plan with mission and vision. Now, any organization always has mission as well as vision. Let us take example of ITC limited vision statement. What ITC says? Sustain ITC's position as one of India's most valuable corporations through world class performance creating growing value for the Indian economy and the company's stakeholders. Now, this is the vision statement what ITC has came out. If we consider the mission statement of ITC, it is to enhance the wealth generating capability of an enterprise in a globalizing environment, delivering superior and sustainable stakeholder value. So, these are the vision statement as well as mission statements where you actually tell your company's vision or organization's vision over say next 5 years, 6 years or more years. Also, the mission statements based on this your organization will expand or your organization will go into the market and they will have their products and services to various customers. When you develop the strategic quality planning, you have to align your strategic plans with these vision as well as mission statements. The revised plan should be aligned with these mission and vision statements as well as the core values of the organizations. You have to embrace the quality aspects necessarily into these vision and mission statements, which will make the impression on customer that the company is always in the process of continuous development. So, this is the sixth step and the last step of strategic quality planning is implementation of the plan. Whatever plan you have developed till now, you have to implement and for that you have to collect the data you have to design the changes and once whenever you want to have any change in organizations, you will always face the resistance for such changes. Now, your prime responsibility is to find out the way out for overcoming the resistance to these changes. At last, these planners should always monitor and assess the results of these strategic plans. Once you implement this strategic plan, you have to assess the results, you have to monitor continuously, so that those strategic plan can be effectively implemented. Now, let us pause for a while and try to answer this question. I hope you have gone through this question and tried to answer this question. So, with this we will conclude today's session. In our next session, we will continue with the concept of benchmarking. Thank you.